welcome to my first video about diet and weight loss. Uh, if you watched the intro video, you know that I lost about 40 pounds last year. I had tried several times before that to to lose the weight, but I just could never keep motivated, never could stick with it no matter what I did. I don't know why, but in October 2012, I was just all... I am going to start today, and I did, and by the following May I had lost that 40 pounds. Now that I've given you a little bit of background about my situation, I will share some of my tips for losing weight. Number one, stop drinking soda. It's horrible, it's evil, it's the worst thing ever. For one, it's empty calories. There's research that's been done that if you drink one or two sodas a day on average, if you drop that, you will lose a minimum of three to five pounds a year. I think that giving up soda was one of the biggest things that helped me stick with it this time. Drink water. Drink lots and lots of water. I believe what they tell you to do is half your body weight in ounces. I'm about 130 pounds right now. Half of that is 65 pounds change that to ounces, 65 ounces, so 8 eight ounce glasses is pretty much where I'm supposed to be. If you weigh more, you drink more, you weigh less, you can get away with drinking less, but might as well drink more because there is just so many benefits to drinking water for one. More often than not, if you are hungry, you're actually thirsty. Your mind has a tendency to mix the two up, so if you stay hydrated, and I mean hydrate because it's going to take more than a day to get that hydration because if you're like most people, you've been with uh, not drinking enough water for years. It's going to take more than a day, probably more than a week, to get fully hydrated again. Once you're hydrated, it will actually help with the hunger. So your mind will no, no longer be mixing it up as being thirsty, or being thirsty as being hungry. And then also, when you lose weight, your fat tissue stores all of the chemicals, all the pollutants that you are exposed to during the day and keeps it in the fat. When you lose the stuff inside the fat cells, all of those chemicals that got stored in your fat gets released back into your bloodstream. And this can affect your kidneys, it can affect everything, And what, but what you'll mostly see it as affecting is your skin. I mean, when you lose weight, you, you start breaking out like crazy, it's just, it's not good for your skin at all in the process. In the long run, it's good for your skin, but in the process, it's not. But the way to minimize that problem is to make sure you're drinking plenty of water so you can flush all of those toxins out. It's portion size. I thought that I had a good understanding of portion size, and I know compared to a lot of people I had a good understanding of portion size. But when I actually started paying attention to everything, I realized I was way over. And portion sizes are a lot smaller than you think. If you can get your portions down to the right size, that will do so much for you to lose weight. Calorie counting. This has to do with the portion size too. You don't realize how many calories you're having. You don't realize that that large fry is 700 calories. One great way to go about this is to use a free site like MyFitnessPal. That one's a great one because it has a really huge database. Be cautious when posting in the forums because like any social media type, there are trolls. You could actually be making healthy lifestyle changes and somebody would be like, oh my god, you should not be eating frozen foods and processed foods and all the other crap. You should only be eating raw, 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 raw. Because they could make you like everyone's out to get you and make you have this whole all or nothing mentality again because you made some good changes and this person yelled at you for it. Well, screw them. This is for you. You don't need them. You just need to, to keep your head on what you're doing and what you want to achieve. Next one has to do with exercise. When I started, I went to an elliptical because I have fibromyalgia, so I have to do low impact type stuff, but I can only last 10 minutes. And instead of getting down on myself, you know, I was like, okay, well, that's a start. Next day, 
you know, my rule would be I have to, I, I could do 10 minutes yesterday, so I can do 10 minutes today. And if I can do 10 minutes, maybe I can add another minute on. So my rule was always that I had to be as good or better than the day before. So I never, I never went back in time, I always got better. After a few months, I could stay on there for an hour and a half. If you can only do three minutes on a machine, do the three minutes. Then tomorrow, do three and a half minutes. Then the next day, do four, or four and a half. You know, just, just keep pushing yourself to be a little bit better, and you will get there. Weightlifting. Weightlifting is the number one exercise you can do to lose weight. If you build muscle, you will burn more calories throughout the day. Cardio burns a lot of calories in that moment and up to an hour afterwards, I believe it is. But weightlifting causes you to burn more calories all day long. If you're a girl, don't just get that little three pound, five pound weight. Lift weights. You can you can lift a lot of weight. It's it's not it's not gonna make you big or bulky or anything like that, I promise. It's it's going to make a big difference. Try new things. If it hasn't worked for you before, then maybe you need to do something else. I kept trying to do videos at home because I thought I would not like going to a gym. I thought I'd be too self-conscious and too afraid to try the machine. But I went and I soon realized that nobody cares what you're doing. Nobody's watching you. They also say if you do the same thing over and over again, your body gets used to it and doesn't burn as many calories. So if you switch it up every now and then, you can end up burning more calories. Plus you might find something you really love, because I, when I was doing it, I'd gotten to Kung Fu, I got into fan fencing, weightlifting, I never did weightlifting before and I really like that. Don't let your fear stop you. If you're afraid to be judged because you're trying to get in shape, be judged because you're a big person in a gym or in weight loss clothes or in a Zumba class or whatever they're called, then you're only hurting yourself. You, you need to go out there and you need to try and you need to realize that you're going to mess up. Don't be afraid to mess up. I don't know how many times I broke down and got an Arby's extra large meal with a milkshake. You know, it happened because we're human. We fail. The only way you're going to succeed is when you realize that true failure is giving up. You learn from your failures. And being afraid, being afraid to, to try something, being afraid of being judged, being afraid of messing up or looking silly, of you achieving everything you want. And I, I don't just mean in diet and weight loss. This is everything in life. If you let fear control what you're willing to do, you won't really live a good life. Just be brave. Be adventurous. Be, I don't know, be a superhero. Go out and have fun. Do something. That's, that's how you achieve anything in life. Keep, keep trying. Keep doing a little bit more. Do something healthy, do something fun, do something adventurous. Those are all my tips. Uh, if you have any comments you'd like to share, please share them in the comment section below. Also, I have my link to my Facebook page is below in the description. And if you liked it, if you like me, uh, please subscribe. Until next time, peace out, babes.